reputation to be wrong or false, to disprove this claim has not been convincingly refuted. It is, it is, is that you in, uh, rest in the fact that it works logically from the point of view of humanistic reasoning. So anyway, you've got to be careful with this. So, uh, Proverbs uh, 123, Proverbs 123. Biblical writers employed the same term in order to mean more than general correction and particularly refers to the discipline and education. In other words, Proverbs 1.23 says, who has that? Do you have that, Janet, yet? Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will recommend my words unto you. Here, the role of God's Spirit factors in a crucial feature of New Testament reproof and conviction. God calls His people to accept godly correction. Proverbs 3, 11. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or lost His reproof. Proverbs 3, 11. In fact, correct, the correction according to God's standard indicates godly fatherly love for us. Proverbs 3.12 For whom the Lord loved, he reproveth, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. A person accepts reproof. A person's acceptance of reproof reveals his character. A person's acceptance of reproof reveals his character. You should be able to refute a falsehood or a fallacy. If a person comes to you and says, I simply just do not believe in God's sovereign grace and Christ alone saves. The true character is that you can refute that. You can refute that with the truth. And he is going to learn to accept it. Some people just can't accept to be reproved. They get angry. They get mad. They fly off the handle. A person's acceptance of reproof reveals his character. Proverbs 9, 8. Look at Proverbs 9, 8. Proverbs 9, 8. But don't be reproved with fallacy. If a person says, you know, you're just stupid <coughs> to believe that. That's a fallacy. You're not stupid. That is a strong, uh, it's called a strongman. You're just plain stupid. You know that? That's not an argument. That's, that's, if a person says that to you, then he doesn't know how to argue with you. He's trying to get you flustered because he doesn't, he doesn't know the truth himself. You're just so stupid you believe that. If a person says that, just say, look, you've made, you've made your first mistake in your argument. You called me stupid. You haven't argued your point. You just called me stupid for not believing what you. You've not told me why you believe that. You just tried to. You just tried to make me. You tried to make me think you're right by calling me stupid. I'm not stupid. You're the one that's stupid in that you cannot argue your point by. You know, you, you have to. You have to say something like that to get me to, not to believe to believe what you said. You can't do that. People raise their voice, like you know. Sometimes I, I'm pretty. You got me. Uh, Proverbs nine eight. You have Proverbs nine eight, mm -hmm. Serena. Yeah. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. So what's that verse say? If you rebuke a person that's a scorner, he's going to hate you for it. But if you reprove a wise person, he's going to love you. If you can help me learn to do it right, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm going to be appreciative. If you can help me learn the truth. I'm glad. If I'm doing something wrong, you come up to me and say, Charles, you know, really, you know, you need to use a Phillips instead of a straight. You'll get that screw out a lot better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here I am trying to get a screw out with a straight screwdriver. I need a Phillips. <laughs> you don't come up to a person and say, you know, you're so stupid, Charles. Well, duh. 
you don't do that. You know, Charles, can I, can I suggest to you that you use a Phillips? <laughs> you know, uh, sorry about that. The love of logical correction marks godly wisdom. The hatred of it reveals foolishness and even self-hate. Proverbs 15.32. Proverbs 15.32. So it's okay to be reproved. That's God's method. To refute a falsehood. Proverbs 15.32. Uh, I'm looking at you, Brooke. Read that again. Such a such a heart for God's correction will help a person remain patient. Listen first, then discerning, then speaking if necessary. Listen patiently, listen first, then discerning, then speaking. First listen to what they're saying, then try to discern what they're saying, and then speak if necessary. The patient, wise listener knows that God's corrections and instructions come in many ways and often from unlikely and even lower sources. God confront confront the rebellious Balaam with an angel that only his donkey could, re 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 that could, could see. And Balaam beat God's obedient donkey and God moved the donkey to reprove Balaam. 2 Peter 2.16 and Peter tells us that the donkey gave Balaam a rebuke. If God can move a donkey to think critically, he can move you. <laughs> if God can use a donkey to reprove, then he can use you. <laughs> In other words, Balaam didn't want to believe the donkey. But sometimes God uses, you know, do you know who I am? So Janet the other day, can I, I hope I can say this. I, this is a perfect example. Janet said the other day, Charles, you need to keep the doors at the church locked. And I'm saying, Janet, don't you know I'm the pastor of this church? You don't need to tell me that. Now, could that have been my attitude? But as a wise man, I needed to receive the truth because I do, I do not like the door for one reason or another. But is it wise to keep the door locked? It's a general rule. Even, even at our house. No, we don't like our door at house. Is, may I repeat that? No, you can't. <laughs> I went to Lexington and didn't need to lock the door. But anyway, I'm just saying it. I'm just, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, God uses people to do things to help you and you're wise to listen mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of getting angry and mad. That doesn't mean you can do that all the time, John. <laughs> 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 no. But I, I'll listen first and then I'll discern it and then I'll speak if necessary. <laughs> okay. But isn't that the truth? In, I mean, isn't that the truth? Because we don't want to hear the truth from somebody else. And I'm sure she didn't do that to embarrass me. She said it when nobody else was around. She didn't say it with an angry spirit. You know, isn't that cool? I like that. Well, uh, I did have, when I was in Altoona, every Sunday night after I got finished preaching, I had family in our church would come to our house and she would spend the next two hours telling me my sermon was wrong. Didn't she? Wasn't she good? Why she was eating your food and drinking our coffee. Right? <laughs> I just listened. You know, I'm going to listen to the argument. Was there an argument there that I could believe? Did it persuade me that what she said was true? Proverbs 28 23. 
and those such though such confrontation we expose the kinds of errors that clever hearts learn to rationalize and hide Proverbs 28, what? let's look at 18 yeah Proverbs 28 23 but also Proverbs 18 17 God's people ought to engage in critical thinking and reprove each other through though always with humility and Christian love through such confrontation, we expose the kinds of errors that clever hearts learn to rationalize and have. You know, we rationalize what we believe. Yep. Well, the reason I did this was because the other person wasn't, wasn't nice to me. And we can rationalize wrong behavior because we are justified by what we do because it shows our hidden agenda and our, our Proverbs 18, 17, Charity. You have, the, you have the other one. I have the other one. All right, don't go. Who has 18, who has 18, 17? Okay. okay. Sorry. Wait. He that is first in his own cause feeleth just, but his neighbor cometh in search of him. The first to plead his case seems just until another comes and examines him. Can your thinking be examined by someone else? In other words, if I think some way, can I, was, if someone else examines it, are we going to come up with the truth? See, truth doesn't change with persuasion. If the truth is, if she said, can, the truth has to be, can I, can, are you free to examine anything I preach? Or what Bill preaches? And I examine everything he preaches. I examine everything anybody preaches. I only came up with four things he said wrong last one Sunday night. That's okay, but uh, but I'm just saying. I mean, it, you know, like me, I say a lot of things. That, you know, that I, I'm speaking real fast, and I say something that you know it's way off base. And Charity would say, Charity, you didn't mean to say that you was mad at the devil, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, but that our our. For instance, like if I'm singing the national anthem, Charles, you misquoted five things in that national anthem. I thought I sang, I thought I sang, sung it all. Yeah, so we do that. Okay, Proverbs 28:23, Charity. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the son. Of course, I may be lying about saying four things. I was saying. Okay, it was six. Okay, good. Uh, and those such examinations, we actually earn mutual respect and love among the wise. So read the, uh, Proverbs 28, 23. Read that again. I didn't hear a thing you said. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. In other words, if someone comes up to you and says something that's flattering you, and you know it's not the truth. You have very little respect for that person because you know he's lying. But if a person comes up to you and is truthful with you, telling you the truth, you're going to learn that he's pretty wise and you respect him for telling you the truth. So learn to discern flattery from the truth. If a person is trying to flatter you to get your money, he is, you are not wise to listen to him. The New Testament writers give the word a very familiar thrust, usually using it to refer to correction from sin and including a call to repent or change towards right living, to refute. This comes out in the very teaching of Christ. In the passage on logic. Look with me, if you will, to John 16. Bill, John 16. John 16. Uh, John 16, yeah. I know, I want you to read the whole chapter. <laughs> chapter 7. What's verse 7 say? He, what's verse 7 say? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Yeah. 